Brrr. Good morning, guys. Days of Jordan the Lion. It's a new day and uh, and a cold and rainy one. Let me tell you about my morning. Woke up, got in the bathroom like I always do, came out, found a big pile of sheets like I always do, went in and opened the sheets so I could get back in bed, and all of a sudden a little mummy comes walking out with a face as white as a ghost. I said, John, what's the matter with you? He's just looking at me all weird, and I said, Jaw, what's the matter with you? And all of a sudden, mm, mm, mm. and I know that face. That means he's getting ready to up Chuck. So I picked him up out of the bed as fast as I could, threw him under my arm like Al Bundy, put one arm up, and ran through the apartment and made it to the bathroom. And uh, our method, and he knows it, is I stick his head in the tub. And so he up chucked a couple of times in the tub. That's what you get for eating sticks in the pork. I don't know how many times I have to tell him, and he does it anyway. So we just took him outside for a little walk, see if that would make some fresh air to make him feel better because he'd been inside with the heat on, and last night it was raining so hard I, I tried to take him outside, but he puts the brakes on. He won't go out when it's raining. He's a little, little dainty about that. He doesn't want to get wet. So a little bit of somewhat sad news today, guys. I'm going to end the uh, the juice cleanse a little early. I'm going to end it today. I have enough stuff for juice today, and I'm going to make it. But uh, let me explain to you why I'm going to end it. Um, I haven't cracked yet. It's just, uh, well, Dave and I were talking yesterday, and he said, you know, why wait till the 1st? Why not do it if your cleanse ends the day before Christmas or on Christmas Eve? Why don't we just start on, like, the 26th or 27th or something? So I was like, okay, that makes sense. And, uh, so I went for my weigh-in this morning and, uh, hopped on the scale, had the camera on it, and, uh, and the scale said I weighed the exact same amount. I weighed 224. But it was kind of, like, fluctuating, going down and going up, whatever, so... Hopped off the scale, looked at my phone, and then I realized that when I hit record, it didn't record. So I hit record, stood on the scale, and got the three dashes underneath, which means your battery's dying... Stepped off again, stepped on, and the the scale was completely dead. So it looked like either I hadn't lost anything or I just had a bad scale or something. But um, I have a date tomorrow night. Um, I have plans with some of my friends tonight. And I was going to end it on uh, Saturday anyway. Like Saturday I would be able to have real food. So I just figured <clears throat> I'm going to drink the juice that I, I'm going to make today anyway. But um, since I hadn't lost any additional weight for like the last two days, which sometimes happens, you sometimes plateau for a few days and then all of a sudden it, it happens again, I just figured since I'm going to be starting the actual exercise program with Dave, and the whole purpose of this was to reset my body to not crave junk and to get back on uh, processing food properly in my system and just feeling better and I've done all that. So instead of going 12 days, I'm going to go 10. And I'm going to officially end it today while having the other juice, but I just wanted you guys to know why. That uh, I just didn't want uh, tonight and tomorrow social events that I have planned, and it's Christmas time. I didn't want to like uh, torture myself for two more days, even though it wasn't torture, it was just, you know, it's the holidays, good things are around, and I just didn't want to put myself through that with friends, going to bars or restaurants, whatever I may get roped into with my friends tonight and be tempted and feel weird about it. So you have my permission to stop if you're on it. Um, you know, by all means, keep it a part of your lifestyle because I'm going to. But uh, I just wanted to let you guys know why I'm stopping. It wasn't like a moment of weakness or anything like that. It's just, I just foresee that instead of having like a week of real food and then going on to the exercise program with Dave, I'm only going to have like two days of it. So I figured why not make it three or four days of it. Hope you guys understand. And I hope that you guys enjoyed the vlog yesterday. That uh, that trip to the Viper Room and discussing River Phoenix was that was a pretty intense subject, and uh, it's still so early that I'm starting this. Barely anybody has really seen it, so I don't really know how everybody feels about it. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Now I don't know what we're gonna do for our day today because it's wet and rainy, but we'll find something, and I hope you guys enjoy that. Let's go live from Hollywood, California. Yep. My mom sent me a bunch of Christmas coffees, a bunch of Christmas flavored coffee from Boca Java. That's the coffee I drink, so this is some sort of mistletoe collection, or some sort of mistletoe concoction. 
Well, I think our plans for today are going to get a little bit ruined. Uh, I had a really awesome vlog planned, and it was an outdoor hike that I had to go on to get to this place. And actually, three really awesome things were filmed out here. I was only going to do one and go back and do the others, you know, within the, the coming days and weeks. But uh, I looked at the forecast, and it's calling for rain, and it's been happening kind of without warning and without fail. So I know it's going to come, I just don't know when, and I don't want to be out there uh, on a hike showing you stuff when it starts raining. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is, uh, I think I'm going to just hop on the train real quick, and I'm going to go do something else. See, I've been back in the Charles Bukowski kick again, and uh, I was listening to Post Office on audiobook last night, and man, I just, I was inspired. I want to go see this Post Office. I want to go see Hell. So today, we're going to go see Charles Bukowski's Hell. You guessed it, missed it again by one minute. Literally swiping my card to buy the ticket, and I could hear the train pulling up. I just got a big wind blast, and I see a light at the end of the tunnel. The train is here. The train is here. <laughs> Union Station. Holy smoke, that tree is not what I came to see, but that's amazing. Well, today, our story kind of kicks it back to 1952, because it's about Bukowski. In 1952, Bukowski, Charles Bukowski was a uh, guy looking for a job. And what he ended up encountering was he got a job at the post office, knowing it would provide him with a pretty good retirement and benefits and everything. He started working there, but he uh, he was made a substitute mail carrier. For whatever reason, Bukowski's boss, from the moment he met him, didn't like him, and uh, and Charles pretty much felt the same way. So after two and a half years of struggling with this guy, Bukowski turned in his resignation and said that he needed to leave his post because he was having ulcers, and so he left the post office. But then just uh, about a half a year later, Charles decides he wants his job back. He writes a letter to the post office, claims that he acted in haste turning in his resignation and that he would like to work there again. And he sent that in 1955. Finally in 1958 he was hired, rehired, and he worked here at this terminal annex in downtown. And this is a place that Charles Bukowski would refer to for 11 and a half years as hell. Now he got a third shift position here as a clerk. And what his job entailed was he had to sit, into a, sit in a scheme. And what a scheme was at that time, and probably is to this day, I really don't know. Uh, what he had to do is he sat in a plexiglass cubicle and it had a bunch of cheese boxes around him. And if you don't know what a cheese box is, a cheese box is basically a wall size unit that has little cubby holes in it for mail. And you would have seen them in old hotels. Um, but that was Charles' job and it absolutely drove him mad. He would work third shift because he said, well, I couldn't, I couldn't sleep anyway. He would get off, he would go home, sleep, wake up, start drinking, write, and then go to work. And he would repeat this for 11 and a half years. Now what he said was, this was the, the job that almost killed him. And why it almost killed him was because he's, with that position in the scheme, he was tested every six months on speed and accuracy. So he would have to sit in that cubicle and throw mail into these card slots. And if he didn't do it properly, in the amount of time that the post office believed he should, he lost your job. And apparently he saw a lot of people lose his job and this created a horrendous amount of stress for uh, Bukowski. His wife even said that um, she met him during this time and because he worked so much and he wrote so much, she barely even saw him. Um, and it wasn't until she became pregnant that he ever proposed to marry her and, and she didn't even want to marry him. 
She said that they had been together for three years having unprotected sex and she had been divorced and she never ever thought she would get pregnant since she hadn't yet. But what she said she thought did it was that um, her emotional state had changed after Kennedy was assassinated. And therein she became uh, pregnant, Charles became a father, and that also probably has a lot to do with why he stayed here as long as he did. One of the things that she said was that he would be so unnerved and so unsettled by having this job that when he wasn't at work, he had a giant cheese box at home that he kept his uh, documents in. He would pull them out and he would uh, take various numbered cards and he would practice thr just sitting there throwing the cards into the slots for fear of losing his job. And he'd actually told people he would sit there and do it so long that when he would get up and uh, walk away from his post, he would leave a, a puddle of sweat. Isn't that un unbelievable? Anyway, he, uh, he pushed it as far as he could and he said the reason he ended up having to leave was it was literally going to kill him. He said I was completely overstressed and beyond that, every day when I would leave work, my arms hurt so bad I couldn't even lift them. Finally, Bukowski had never missed a day writing throughout the time that he worked here. He, he always woke up, always drank, and always wrote. He met a man who found his writing that worked at a print shop and uh, offered to print his some of his poetry and ended up selling pretty well. And the man, uh, John Martin, who ended up doing that, ended up um, striking a deal with Charles that if he could figure out a way to uh, to pay him, he would like to publish him. So Charles told him how much he needed to live off of per month, and if he could get that, that he would quit his job here. And he did, in fact, quit his job here then. And um, that's when he ended up writing his masterpiece, Post Office. If you've never read Charles Bukowski or know anything about him, that's a really good place to start because he really outlines his entire life with his job here and his time outside of here and how his emotional state was impacted in post office and you can actually go on net or on you youtube and listen to the audiobook and I, I think you would really enjoy it it's uh it's definitely worth your time he ended up completing that book in a very short amount of time i think i believe it was within a month and, uh, and he said, when you're scared to death, you, you can do anything. And he was no longer having a job, no longer had the security, and he was scared to death. But this, for 11 and a half years, was Charles Bukowski's third shift hell. Well, no rain, so I guess they were full of it, and uh, I don't know, it looked pretty clear to me. I know it's still early, it's only like 10 o'clock, but I wanted to get this thing out and done early just in case it did rain since I was up early, nursing a sick pup. So, I don't know. I still, I'm still i going to go hang out with my friends tonight. I don't know what we'll do in the meantime. I, I need to go mail some stuff, but I've been waiting on one thing, and it's for you, Vernwood. Uh, I owe you a record, but I've been planning on going to Disneyland, and getting something for your kids. You told me that they wanted something and uh, so Andrew and Arthur I didn't want to send this record without including that for you. So um, it's coming, it's on its way, so I'm not gonna go do the post office yet. But uh, we'll find something else to do. It's still early in the day and I might just go for another cup of coffee now. Uh, yeah, like I said, no rain today. Jeez, shouldn't have even opened my mouth hour after I sat there and I guess complained that there was no rain the heavens just completely opened up on us and What you thinking about? 
They give you a little bit of camera time and you start licking your junk. The one plus side to Christmas in Los Angeles is there's no traffic. Well, even though I said I was going to break my fast, it's 3 p.m. and I still haven't yet. I'm just, I had some juice left from yesterday, so I've been drinking that, and uh, just because I can doesn't mean I had to, and I just haven't yet, so maybe I will now. We'll see. Well, we had to come over so Jaw could see his best buddy, Kevin. I mentioned Kevin's name earlier, and Jaw just went absolutely nuts, so we came over, and mostly because Kevin was completely insulted I, that I had never seen the movie The Ref. It's like a holiday favorite in his house, so we're over here to watch the ref. Get him, Jaw! Get him, Jaw! The first real food well, in it's, like 10 it's, days. It's minute rice, so it's not real. Well, that's what. Real rice. That's like some sort of red bean mixture. Black bean. Black bean? Yeah, that's the real food. Vegan Peruvian food. That's hummus and oh, there we go. Vegan Peruvian food. It's my meal. Pretty good. Well, I'm back from hanging out. Um, I loved the ref. I absolutely loved it. I can't believe I had never seen it before. Kevin Spacey was awesome. Everybody in it was awesome. And go figure. What were the odds? Okay, I had never heard of Judy Davis. Never heard of her before. Never seen her in anything that I can think of until I did that River Phoenix vlog over at the Viper Room yesterday. And then she was the star of this movie. She was the star of the ref. Go figure. As soon as she came on, I go, that's Judy Davis? That's the one that River Phoenix said made a skin crawl? Wow. She was a powerful actress, but she had very creepy eyes, so I can totally see why he was unnerved by her. But I love the movie, and I totally forgot that um, some friends of mine used to quote it. They used to call coffee Scandinavian Christmas Potion. And as soon as I heard that, I busted out laughing. So good call on that movie, Kevin. That was a lot of fun. I, uh, I enjoyed the ref a lot. All right, good night, friends. It's been a fun day, and if you've never followed Charles Bukowski, if you've never read any of his stuff, Start with his documentary. It's called Born Into This, and you get a pretty colorful description and colorful portrait of what this guy was like, and he was a real hellraiser, and he was pretty entertaining, in my opinion. Um, hopefully the weather will, uh, will not be so wishy-washy as it was today. Part of the morning, it was dark. Then when I went and did the vlog, it was fine. Then it rained, and then it was fine again. Who knows? Hopefully it'll be good tomorrow, and I can go do the vlog tomorrow that I was really wanting to do today. Now, I do have to warn you, what I'm doing tomorrow, I know generally where it was filmed. See, some of these I go and I already kind of know a specific spot what I'm looking for. This one, all I know is a general canyon. And I'm pretty much looking and finding all of this stuff on my own tomorrow. So there's no guarantee. I don't even know that what I'm looking for will look the same, that the gate that I'm looking for will look the same, but I do want to say this. If I find this, this will be one of the most fun ones I've ever done. And just to give you a little bit of a clue, it involves this guy right here. So, until tomorrow, have a great night guys. And next time we talk, you'll actually be watching that vlog on Christmas Eve. So be safe, do something great tomorrow. Bye.